2024 is here, and today I want to talk about the tools that I'm going to be using this year to make stuff. The programming tools, the video tools, uh, even some organizational tools. I just want to show you guys the sort of behind-the-scenes tools that I'm using to make things. I get a lot of questions about what I'm sort of using for different stuff, so this will be a good sign to sort of tap of just like, hey, here's what I'm using. Uh, like I said, I made a video yesterday about the technologies I'm using, so we're not going to be talking about Svelte or React or anything like that. Uh, instead, rather, the like actual things that I'm using to implement all that stuff. Um, this is probably not nearly as subject to change as the technologies video is. I'm trying to keep my technologies fairly consistent, but if you watch this for any my channel for any period of time, you know how much I love trying new things and screwing with new stuff. Um, I'm not quite as, I don't change as much with my tools. I try and kind of pick stuff and really get deep into them and understand them and keep them. Uh, I don't like to change them that often, uh, except for one, which I'll talk about in a second here. But uh, I guess with all that out of the way, if you enjoy this, make sure you like and subscribe. And uh, otherwise, let's first talk about my programming tools. So for my programming tools, my primary one, of course, is VS Code. VS Code is my editor of choice. I have tried many times to use NeoVim. I have wanted to use NeoVim for a long time. I have wanted to need to use NeoVim for a long time, but every time I do it, it just doesn't feel right to me. VS Code just kind of feels like home to me. I've made some changes to it to customize it more and make it closer to NeoVim, to be honest. Uh, I'll do a dedicated video very soon here talking about my VS Code setup. It's more, um, it's less default than a lot of people's. Um, I'm using stuff like Vim emulation, I took away tabs, I've set up a bunch of keyboard shortcuts to jump between files, I am very heavily focused on doing most of my editing with the keyboard, I keep a lot of those principles, but I'm not fully into the NeoVim world. I've tried it, I just can't get into it, um, it just doesn't really feel all that worth it to me when VS Code just feels like home. So VS Code is my editor of choice, although I am using Vim emulation in it. Uh, if you watch any of my videos, you can tell I use Vim. Um, the next programming tool that I really like is Table Plus. Uh, I get questions about this a lot. Anytime I do database videos or talk about backend stuff, I always use Table Plus as a, uh, an example because it's really useful to show visually what's happening in SQL and show all the tables. Um, I get it for free because I use, um, what's it called? I use Setup for Mac. It's not sponsored or anything like that, but I use Setup to get all of my uh, apps. I use, I have like a, a bunch of stuff in there. Actually, I have like a memory cleaner on there. I use, um, the like clean my Mac and all that stuff I get through it. So I get a bunch of different useful things. And, uh, table plus is one of the ones I get in there. It is a fantastic way to interface with SQL databases. And if you watch my technologies video, you'll know that I use SQL all the time. Uh, my SQL and plan and scale to be specific are really my databases of choice for this year. Uh, it's what I'm really focused on. I'm just going to try and stick with. Um, so table plus is just a fantastic way to interface with those. Definitely check that out. Um, for my CLI and my terminal, I've been using warp. Um, it is, it's a cool terminal. They have a bunch of features, like some AI features and stuff and all that. I don't use any of it. I just think it looks neat and it feels pretty good to use. And I like the colors. They're pretty, uh, it's just a normal ZSH terminal. I don't, it's nothing special. I basically just use it every day to go in, CD into my projects directory, and then open up whatever I'm working on. I don't do that much in it. Uh, but, you know, I like how it looks, and I've heard that there are cool features in there. It's similar to, like, Raycast. Uh, if you guys have heard of that, a lot of people love using that, and I've seen some cool stuff on Twitter. Uh, for me personally, you know, I use it every once in a while to jump between tabs, but I haven't gotten too deep into it. Maybe I'm missing out, and I could be more of a power user, but, yeah. I, it's just a neat thing. Uh, same thing with warp. I don't need it as much, but it looks cool. I like it. Um, another one here, this isn't as much of a technology, but or I guess it is Uh drizzle studio. This is similar to table plus and fulfills a similar role. Um, I've added to basically all my major projects. Now a PNPM run DB studio command where it'll open up drizzle studio. It's a really nice way to screw with and mess with your data on the fly. And it works really well. They did a fantastic job of building it. The Drizzle team has just been killing it lately. They are phenomenal. I love what they're building. The guys are great. Um, if for some reason you're watching this and you haven't heard of them, go go check them out. Uh, so Drizzle Studio is definitely something I'm working on here. Another thing within my technologies for development, I think uh, talking about my hosting providers is sort of worth it here. I went deeper into this in my technologies video yesterday, but really... 
Um, the three big ones are Vercel, Koyeb, and Railway. All three of these are fantastic. Uh, they all do things a little bit differently. Uh, generally speaking, Vercel is the home of most of my front end code, my full stack front end stuff. But anytime I'm focused on doing like a dedicated standalone back end in Python or Golang or even Node.js like a background worker, uh, it would definitely go on Koyeb or Railway. Probably Koyeb I would lean towards. Uh, they just... It feels really fast. That's not a good anecdotal state. That's not like a good quantifiable statement. And obviously, this isn't a deep dive on any of this stuff. I'm kind of just going over the high levels for this stuff. But it just feels really, really fast. Like if you use anything on there, you'll see it just feels fast. I don't know how they do it, but it just feels fast. Um, so I'm a huge fan of all their stuff. Uh, they're all the one quick, one click, quick deploys. Uh, super easy and intuitive to use. Nothing too crazy to say there. Um, and the last big programming tool that I use is Docker. Um, the main reason I'm using Docker is twofold. Uh, one is for Supabase. Uh, Supabase to run locally requires Docker. So I am using Docker basically every day to write Block because Block is using Supabase for the back end. Um, it is a... It's a heavyweight technology, and I don't understand it super deeply. At this point, I understand conceptually the whole idea of creating images and containers and stuff and then running those containers and how all this stuff works. I get how it actually works at this point, which is nice because I really didn't get how it worked for a long time. I should probably make a video going over that like Docker for dummies or Docker explained because I've seen a lot of videos that are really good like showing how to use it. But just conceptually what Docker even is, is hard to explain because everyone is always just like, oh yeah, it's just a way to containerize your applications. But like, what the fuck does that actually mean? So you know, explaining and condensing down the fact that it's like, hey, really what you're doing is you're just taking your code and you're injecting it into a little Linux box and then that little Linux box can float out in the void and that's your image and then you can take that image and you can run it wherever you want and that's, you know, how it all works and then Kubernetes is scaling those, you know, condensing that into a good visualized video. I think that'll be worth doing. Um, I'm also using Docker for my SQL locally. Um, most of the time I am just using planet scale up and down, even for local development, because you know, it's cheap enough and I don't care. I just use a dev branch and that's my local development experience. Um, but occasionally if I need a local MySQL instance, I reach for Docker. I've tried to install MySQL on my machine. I think I just fucked something up somewhere. It does not work. It just explodes and I can't get it to work within my terminal. Um, I don't know what happens somewhere deep within some slash etc files or whatever something got screwed up i think homebrew screw i think i tried to download it both from us from homebrew and from their website and it's just screwed up um so i kind of just gave up on it and i just run it through docker which is honestly a pretty responsible way to do it i think a great way to use docker locally is for uh local instances of like a database or redis or any other service that you just want to spin up and have a nice isolated containerized instance because that's what's nice about containers it doesn't touch anything else on my computer i have my little mysql container within my local docker my docker desktop or it's really just my local docker instance and if i'm done with it and i don't want it anymore i can just delete him and he's just gone so it's a nice replicatable containerized section of my uh, computer where i can just have those things so that all just feels really good and i like having it that way um, the next set of tools I sort of want to talk about here is going to be my organizational tools. Um, you know, we're going to get into like more just like high level stuff. So if you're just here for the programming stuff, that's the end of the programming. Uh, we're going to talk about organization and video production. So you can click off now. Um, but for my organizational tools, uh, the big three that I'm using are Notion, Discord, and Obsidian. Um, Notion, I didn't want to need Notion. I didn't really want to use it. I didn't want it. I wanted to just be cool and do markdown files and shit for everything. But, you know, as things have gotten more complicated, as the channel is getting more complicated, as my projects are going from simple to do apps where a bunch of homies are just screwing around and making stuff to like, you know, we actually have to take this pretty seriously now. Um, the boards, the everything, you know, it just it feels pretty necessary to have all these bulk features. I'm sitting here looking at a big notion board with a bunch of notes here on this video, some things I wanted to talk about. It's really just a bullet point of technologies that I'm talking out of my ass. But like, you know, you need to have this stuff and I need to have it more organized. So we're using notion, the boards, the calendars, the views, the shared text, the notes. It all just has to be there for the channel, for sediment art, for uh, block. Well, block, we used to use it. We've moved more over to Google Drive, which we'll talk about in a second. Um, 
inside our viz. Again, we move more to Google Drive just because we're cheap and I don't, I, you know, I don't want to pay 20 bucks a month for a team thing. Um, we don't make money. We can't do that. Uh, when we start making money, we might do it. Even then, I don't even know if we'll do it. I'm going to be honest. We're very frugal about this stuff. Like we, you know, we squirm at the idea of paying 10 bucks a month for literally anything. So I don't know if we'll ever, well, we probably will. We'll see. Um, but yeah, so it, it's very useful. It works really well. It's a fantastic product. Um, so yeah, Notion is being used. Obsidian is what I use for like personal stuff. Um, a lot of my like personal note taking and stuff and planning I do in Obsidian. I just trust it a little bit more. Um, it's just kind of, it's a, it feels like a lower level of abstraction than Obsidian is. Obsidian, or not Obsidian, Notion. Notion feels like it's super like, like I don't, it feels like kind of a black box and it's super high level abstraction type stuff. You know, Obsidian just feels like a markdown client, which I prefer, uh, especially for stuff where I'm talking about anything personal or anything. I want that in nice markdown files, which I feel more, you know, I can point to it on my disk. I can be like, yeah, that thing I wrote, it's right there on the disk. With Notion, it's out in the void somewhere. I don't really know. So I like having Obsidian for that kind of thing. We wanted, I wanted to sort of do that as the organization for all of the companies and the channel and all that stuff. But, you know, I tried it and it's... I hate Jira boards and I know on principle Jira boards suck and you know I, I've been there I, I've, I've worked the nine to five I know I know I know the Jira board life but you know they exist for a reason so the extra features of Notion do feel very important especially when working with other people and scaling beyond just me sitting here coming up with random crap so uh, Notion and Obsidian are both getting used uh, Google Drive you know it's the classic uh we're using that right now for some sort of like uh, just general stuff and storing everything. Um, we, yeah, I mean, it's Google Drive. You know what it is. Uh, and then the last one is, of course, Discord. Uh, I have a Discord for this channel. Quick plug. If you guys want to join that, definitely join that. I need to figure out a way to be more active there and some things to do there. Um, I'm not super used to like having that or doing stuff with it. Um, I, it's kind of just sat for a bit. I need we, we need to figure something out for that. Figure out a good way to use and work with the channel discord and come up with some cool stuff. We have a bunch of people in there and I feel, feel really bad just letting it sit. I want to do something with it. Um, but of course we have that. And then also just, that's how I talk to the guys, all the guys I'm working with and everything we're doing. Uh, it's just over discord. It's what we do. It's what we use. Um, from there, I'll talk about video production for video production. We are, um, well, I guess it's just me right now. I do hope to scale this a bit this year, but for right now, it's just me. Um, I'm using Final Cut for video editing. I'm using Isotope for audio editing. Basically, I just plug it in and then I go through and I find all the places where it was popping or clicking or being too quiet, fix all that stuff. And then Affinity Photo for my glorious dog shit thumbnails. Um, I've been getting help with those. <laughs> you, you can you can very clearly tell the ones that I made and the ones that I didn't make. So we're going to outsource those even more this year. But when I do have to make them, I make them with Affinity Photo. And then the last piece is like design stuff. Uh, we use Figma. Again, uh, if you watch this channel for any period of time, you know that I cannot be trusted with any design work. I am terrible at it. I, my sense for design is just not there. I wish it was, but I just don't do that well with it. I can see good design. I can see bad design. I can't make good design, but I can make bad design. Um... But my teams were all using Figma. Uh, the For Block, we have a dedicated designer using Figma there. Uh, and Insider Viz, one of the guys that we're working with, he is an engineer, but he's also really good at Figma. So he does all the work in there. And I use it every once in a while if I need to make a little thing or whatever. Um, yeah, those that's the sort of bulk of my technologies. I'm looking down here at my taskbar. Oh, yeah, another one. I get a co I've gotten questions about this a couple of times. My browser I've been using is Arc. Um, it's the cool new zoomer hip browser thing. It's the, um, you know, it's the neat new browser. Uh, it's based on, I think it uses the same engine as Chrome. It feels and looks really good. I really like it. Um, Chrome itself. I also still use, um, I need to get everything organized. It's kind of a mess right now. Um, all my stuff is super disorganized and screwed up because, I've kind of like, I don't know, I've kind of like fallen into like actually doing things and I'm not like, I wasn't really prepared for all the stuff that I'm working on to go from just like a side project where I'm kind of just making stuff and having fun to like, oh, these are real businesses and real serious things that need to be handled properly. And I'm not a super organized person, so I need to figure out how to organize and manage all that stuff 
So eventually the goal is to like with Arc, use their little uh, section thing to have like a section. So like this is the channel and the channels accounts. This is the insider viz and the insider viz accounts. These are the block accounts and these are the sediment art accounts and these are the personal accounts and these are the whatever accounts. It's a mess, but right now it's all just all over the place. But we're going to get that locked in eventually and organized and I'm going to use Arc to do that. Um, anything else on here? Um, Zoom. Why do I zoom up my taskbar? Ew. I hate Zoom. No. Um, and calendar, Google Calendar, uh, music. I use Apple Music and YouTube Music. Uh, YouTube Music because it's actually, honestly, YouTube Premium is way better than I thought it would be. I don't know what I'm rambling about right now, but YouTube Premium is so much better than I was expecting it to be. It is, uh, YouTube Music is worth it and YouTube Premium is worth it. I like them both. And Apple Music great music client, lossless, all that stuff. Uh, use those both at the gym. Um, yeah, that, those are my technologies. Um, I don't know how to end this, uh, just kind of rambling and ranting. Uh, if you enjoyed, make sure you like, and subscribe and I will see you guys soon.